Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and all the bots who are tuning in live, and hello to those who are watching the recorded replay on YouTube. I'm M. Lloyd. I'm an artist. I make crazy, um, vibrant, bold artworks full of detail and complexity, but sometimes not. <laughs> so sometimes I do really simple stuff, and sometimes I do really um, basic things, but it's always colorful, it's always bold. That's the goal. That's my style. Um, today I'm actually doing a really cool sort of art form that I really enjoy doing actually. It's super relaxing. It's a art form, an art form, an art style I call Stratum. So the idea of Stratum is that it's inspired by like, um, like the layers of the earth. So you have just a thick black line, you have a lot of negative space in the picture, you have, and then you sort of have these layers of sort of doodled patterns, which is a lot of fun. Um, I've done a few of these before, this is just one of them, like um, this is another one which is kind of fun and you can see these on my Instagram actually, so I posted uh, three of them on Instagram so you can find me at M. Lloyd Artist. I'm at, I am at M. Lloyd Artist everywhere so no matter where you want to find me you can, it's pretty cool. Um, so last stream I actually did this thing which is kind of weird. <laughs> It's, um, I don't know, it was kind of weird. I sort of drew a line and then just doodled over the top of the line and I kind of enjoyed it. I'll probably end up doing that another stream actually. But um, yeah, if you really like it, let me know and I'll definitely continue it. But this stream, I'm gonna just do a really cool stratum artwork. And the truth is, this is probably gonna take a couple of streams. So these sketches take a lot of work. And so as a result, um, I'll definitely have to, yeah, I probably might make I don't know, maybe I'll make a weekly thing of this. So usually I start my stratum sketches over on the side, like over here. But I kind of want to go over like that this time. Because I, I sort of did that once, but I haven't done it for a while. So I want to give myself plenty of room to sketch, but not too much. Um, I don't want to have too much of a sort of doodle area. Um, so let's add some cool overlays. Let's do it. Let's go to this lava lamp one. I haven't had, I haven't used this one for a while actually. It's a bit of fun. Um, wonderful. If you're watching, feel free to follow and I look forward to getting to know you. So one thing I've always annoyed, that has always annoyed me about these things is that this particular pen is always quite thin and I've always wanted it to be just a little bit larger. But um, you know what? I'll, I'll worry about it another time. I, sh I really should because I find I always use about, probably about five or four different brushes. Some people really go all out with brushes and they use hundreds of them, but no, I kind of I like to keep it pretty simple. Um, but I really should refine them. I should like make them the right size and the right shape. Sort of get that streamlined feature just right. So what I'm gonna do to make this particular line just a little bit bigger, go like this. So I'm kind of cheating already. <laughs> you haven't even started the stream and I'm already cheating. Let's go large. I'm gonna just make it like that. So I wonder if you can guess what I'm doing here. Maybe, maybe not. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna color drop this. So I'm gonna merge both these layers and then I'm gonna just add a little color drop right in the middle. And what I've realized is that there was a bit of a halo effect there. You might have been able to see it. Just a tiny little white line. We don't want that. I'll use this feature called color drop threshold. So you sort of, when you drag and drop the color, you kind of pull it all the way to this side. And that usually means that there's no annoying white halo lines. Um, this bit's a little bit off. I'll just thicken that out a bit. And you know what? I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty good start for our sketch. Um, the first line is always the hardest. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Maybe I just made that up, but we'll, we'll soon find out. Um, cool. So what we'll do to start off with, we shall create our first pattern. Now notice that I'm actually using a separate layer for this one, that's good. Um, that's so I can draw somewhat non-destructively. I might even switch on my streamline feature just a little bit more. So some of these straight lines are just a little bit easier to draw. So 
So with um, stratum sketches, I like to try and keep them a little bit more, how do I describe it? A little less, um, I don't know, strict. Make them a little bit more, I don't know, doodly in a sense. I like to have that sort of amateurish kind of feeling with them. So it's okay if my lines aren't completely straight. It's very much inspired by doodle art, really. So you see that a lot in things like tattoos and I feel like a lot of people do it for like that sort of meditative drawing, if that makes sense. But um, we're gonna do it here. I tend to do, I tend to have a bit of a more 3D kind of style with my doodles. But uh, we'll soon find out. God, I'm really taking a lot of time with this line. <laughs> it's actually been a while since I've drawn, I've realized. It's probably been a good week or so. I've been doing really boring adult things, really. So in the place that I work, which I which will always remain a secret, I um I've been doing a lot of staff training and I've enjoyed the heck out of it. There's something really cool about imparting knowledge. The fact that you just have this like um this hole in your face and then it sort of does a couple of weird vibrations and then airwaves move to another person's head and then all of a sudden they know the same things that you know without contact. It's such a weird thing. But um, yeah, maybe I think about it too much. <laughs> um, who knows? But there is something very cool about imparting knowledge that one day I'll, I'll hope to understand. Um, okay. Let's go to just quickly add some more lines here. So I'm creating a, a few sort of blocks just like that. Oh, I noticed we've got Dr. O in the chat. Um, nice to see you again, my friend. I hope you're all doing well. Um, let's hop that in there like that. So just adding some nice consistent squares here. This is probably going to be the most boring um, pattern I add into the doodle block. But nonetheless, it is a pattern. Um, but I really should break it up because it, it is pretty boring. So let's, um, what I might do actually, just to make them less boring, I'm going to add a slight bit of lineage to it. I don't know if lineage is a word. It really should be. So with this design, I'm thinking of making it like a desktop background that all my followers will get for free. And it's kind of funny because I was, <laughs> I sort of said that about a previous um, artwork that I made a couple of, a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah, it probably was about a fortnight ago. And um, I got distracted because I wanted to make it something really good. I was going to make it like a color pack kind of thing. So you have like one download, but you get um, like a whole heap of colors that you can choose from. And I'll show you where I'm up to it. So if I go to my gallery, so this should be a free download that you'll be getting soon. So I've actually tweaked some of the colors. I, f I realized from feedback from one of my good friends, Spins, who actually made the music to the lobby. Um, so if you're here at the very start, you would have heard this really cool ethereal music. That's uh, Spinsy. And he gave me some amazing feedback. And he said that some of my, um, all of the color palettes that I'd chosen were all very purplish and they all kind of looked the same. And I didn't realize it until he sort of said it. So I've added a few more interesting ones. So this is, yeah, so this is a artwork I made a couple of streams back. And so there'll be a mobile version, which sort of sits nice and vertically. Um, but this one will also work horizontally. So if you've got a desktop computer, um, you'll actually be able to use it as well. So I've made a green one, which is similar to this actually. There's been, an, I did an updated version, but I usually do these on my phone. So <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I do most of my artworks on my phone. Here's a sort of orangey, I don't know, I kind of like this one actually. It's it's a bit of fun. It's, um, it's very vibrant, very bold. So you'll definitely notice it when you um, have it on your background. Very cool. Um, then there's this one actually that I really like. And I sort of completely removed all the colors and re-added them, but in this really nice, subtle, I don't know, sort of light tone, which kind of looks quite nice if you ask me. 
Um, but for every single color palette I choose, I also have this sort of clustered version like this. And so these are really dense and really busy and they look super cool. Um, I might have to put like a mask kind of effect on this one because I feel like, um, yeah, when you look at it um, on your desktop background, you can't quite see the time effectively because there's a lot of really light colors. But these are some desktops that, desktop and wallpapers that all followers will get for free. And it's going to be part of like a big marketing push to get more of my uh, viewers, so to find more viewers, I suppose. I'm still sitting on 31 followers and it's been a very slow, slow climb for this last month that I've sort of started streaming. So I'm kind of, I'm very eager to get a few more people in the chat and a few more people just watching. That would be really neat. Because the more people you have watching, the higher you climb up on the art category. So if I, I might have to find some people from external places to be able to really make a dent, I think. Okay, let's take a drink. Ah, here we go. So I had heaps of um, bots when I started the stream today. It was kind of weird. I feel like that's that means I'm becoming successful. <laughs> or maybe not, I don't know. But um, basically, it was that traditional bot where it's like, um, want to become famous? <laughs> Buy followers and viewers on bigfollows.com. Um, this does not, this channel does not endorse bigfollows.com. I'm sure they'll probably like spam your inbox if you even even approach that website. But um, yeah, it was kind of weird. I, but I, I got some practice at modding. So I got some practice at um, banning people and timing out people. That was kind of fun. So I enjoyed that. Um, there's a positive to every negative. Um, yeah, I kind of like that already. I feel like that detail is just enough. I might break it up a little bit with some kind of, um, with something, I don't know. I'm feeling like a leaf. A leaf is what I'm instinctively feeling at the moment. So I might do this in a separate layer, just for that non-destructive workflow. And uh, how many should I do it in? Well, let's actually do the leaf first and then we'll decide how many there should be. Or should I maybe just do something like this? No, no, let's do a leaf. Let's do a proper hardcore leaf. Um, it's a hardcore leaf. It goes to like grunge concerts and emo concerts. It's, um, it has little piercings. So I'm thinking something like that. Something relatively straightforward and simple. But I might, yeah, I, I might turn on streamline a bit because it's hard to get the straight lines with leaves. I always find that. Let's attack it from the other side. Perfect. So, yeah, you know, it is going to be a really hardcore leaf. It's going to have some piercings. So let's go like this. You know, there's like weird little, that lame, those lame spike things that punks have. It's going to have those. <laughs> um, I shouldn't say that on Twitch. It's probably like a really popular thing and people probably think it's super cool. I don't. I think they're lame. <laughs> um, I think they're really lame. I don't know. I'm like that in a way. I don't really like tattoos either. I like the art of tattoos, but I don't like um, the idea of actually putting them on your body, which is kind of weird, which is a whole point of tattoos. I, I, I get it. But um, I don't know. I, I would never put one on there. I think the reason is because I'm the type of guy who can't stick with a wallpaper on his phone for more than like, I don't know, a couple of days. So the idea of like having something permanently on your own skin um, really, I don't know, I don't think that would work for me. I, I'll, I'll get really sick of it really fast. So yeah, I'm not a huge fan of them. Um, but it's all good if you are. I might actually remove this line in the middle there. It's not quite symmetrical enough. It's annoying me. Let's go like that. And I, I might actually make it a bit thicker, actually. It needs, I feel like we need a bit more line variance. Just like that. And then what we'll do, because we're in the right layer, we'll get rid of these 
the part of the leaf that you won't see because it's uh, obscured by these hardcore emo spikes or punk spikes Pi punk piercings I wish I knew what they were called uh, let's pop that in very cool it's a cool punk leaf um, cool they kind of look a bit like um, you know those plants with like thorns on them it kind of looks like that in a sense I like it I'm, I'm gonna stick with this so I'm going to do a few more of these and I need to find the right distance for how many how many of these I should do. So when we find that distance, we'll try and consistently do it. So how many have I got here? One, two, three, four. So let's go one, two, three, four. And then we'll have one like here. And I'll go one, two, three, four. Oop. Then we'll start one there. One, two, three, four. And we'll start one here. One, two, three, four. So I'm adding like a group of four little squares in between um, the two where the, the leaf sort of come out. And I feel that will look really cool. And so now, now that we've done that, I'll actually add another layer here. And the reason being is because I want to easily erase these um, later on. But we also want to have consistent lineage, so let's get the same size line we had earlier. So you can probably hear the creaky chair in my in the background. <laughs> uh, I really, oh God, I really should get a new chair. Um, I'm about to move into a new place soon, so I'm kind of um, I'm in that right sort of mindset to buy new chairs. It's actually funny. I I um reupholstered a armchair the other day so I say the other day it makes it sound like I did it in like just a couple of um, like a couple of hours no no it took me like a whole week and it was this really cool retro 60s chair and um, yeah it's a lot of fun actually it because you have to sort of stain the wood and then you kind of um, how do I put it then you have to sort of um, yeah, you have to do it a number of times because if you stain something once it doesn't quite hide the original color why am i struggling so much with this leaf <laughs> let's just do it <laughs> there we go i'm getting distracted by my story let's, there we go cool so not all the leaves have to be the same size by the way uh, many of them can be uh, different sizes and it just adds to that more sort of human element of the sketch so it doesn't matter at all I might actually drop the opacity of this under layer. So that's what I'm using as a reference to where I'm going to put my leaves. My punk leaves as I'm calling them. Let's, oh, no, let's put it in the right layer. There we go. Yeah, God, I feel so rusty. It's been a while since I've actually properly drawn I've done a little bit of drawing on my phone recently actually it's um yeah it's kind of weird but it's, yeah I feel like I've done more drawing on my phone than I have on my actual iPad very cool because I've sort of been going back to work recently um, now that the lockdowns lifted just a little bit and eased we're starting to get a bit more flexibility in Victoria so now um, I find myself doing more and more sketches on my phone, which is which is fine. If you've ever tried sketching on your phone, um, you'll know it's actually not as hard as people make it out to be. People think that sketching on your phone is a really hard thing to do. But really, with the ability to zoom in on things and the, the ability to copy and paste and undo, uh, it doesn't really matter how big your screen is. You can really create pretty awesome art on anything. Okay, right. Let's now create that line in all of them. And yeah, it's, I kind of like already that some of these are a bit smaller and a bit thicker, sort of wider. I think that's good. It gives it just a little bit of variance. And as we add more detail, it'll look better and better. Hopefully. <laughs> um, 
I speak with such confidence, but um, these are, it's actually funny. I feel like stratum sketches, which is the name for, which is the name I give to these um, styles of sketches because it's inspired by like the layers of the earth. Um, I feel like these particular types of sketches, they're, um, I don't know, I feel like they're more likely to go either way. Sometimes they work really well, sometimes they don't, but um, yeah. At the same time, uh, it's always enjoyable and it's super relaxing. I felt like I've kind of needed that um, in the last couple of days. I've done a lot of work trying to organize finance and stuff like that, so a lot of boring adult stuff. So to just be able to chill out and do some sketches, um, it's awesome. And this is like the most relaxing kind of sketch I I know how to do. <laughs> um, if you like these, you're welcome to follow me on Instagram as well, because I kind of, when I finish one, I usually put it up there. Um, it's also where I notify people of my streams. So yeah, you're welcome to check that out. That's at Emloid Artist, same as, yeah, pretty much with me, everything is Emloid Artist. I'm, I may not be huge, but I'm very consistent with my branding. <laughs> I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that at least. Okay. So for those who have just joined, um, these little spike things, um, they're kind of inspired by those weird piercings that sort of punk people and goths have. Um, and so that's what I think every time I draw them on. But they could also be very, they also have a few sort of similarities to things like um, thorns on bushes and vines. So especially now that it's on a leaf, I'm kind of trying to decide what colors I'm going to incorporate into this. But um, I think that'll come a lot later. Usually I do, oh, I say usually, I'm kind of, I like to vary it up a little. But often I find I do half the stream where I do an illustration, then half the stream I do coloring in, especially in my doodle bob, doodle bob, doodle blob stream. So if you've never seen one of those, um, God, I do those, I was going to do those every Friday. I'm thinking of making it every Saturday actually, because um, I don't know, I feel like I'm actually struggling to become available on Fridays. Everything seems to happen on Fridays with me. So I might change my schedule and make um, these doodle blob streams um, every every Saturday. But for those who want to know what a doodle blob is, a doodle blob is this, um, where, did I, where did I put them? I have so many doodle blobs, here we go, cool. But it's actually every Friday I make a doodle blob and I add it to this huge poster. And so at the moment, where am I up to? I'm up to this one. So I haven't touched this in two weeks. It's kind of weird, but um, I'm looking forward to actually drawing the next one. So this is my first stream. We have the second stream here. And the idea is that it basically just starts off as a bunch of blobs and then you doodle inside them. Yeah, the name's not genius, but it's um, at, at the very least, it's suitable, I think. <laughs> And then I try to fill them up with really varied and really hyper colorful things. And I always like how they look at the end. This one's going to be like a big poster that you can buy and stick on your wall and um, fill your apartment or place with just some color. Um, that's what I'm, I'm kind of looking. I'm, th I'm looking to get one myself. <laughs> so I'm looking to sort of color up my own uh, place that I'm moving into shortly. Um, okay. Let's continue to add these um, punk spikes to our leaves. These punk piercings. Wish I knew the name for them. Do they call them like studs or something? Because they're also like the things that you have on leather jackets. Um, oh, I need a drink. There we go. My terminology is not the best. Um, let's have... A look. So they don't look the best at the moment because what I've got to do, um, I actually have to remove the leaf that sort of sits behind these little piercing things, these studs. That's probably the right word for them, studs. I should use that. That's probably a good word. Um, there we go. They look a bit better now. I might even add a little bit of detail to them, try and capture. A little bit of depth. There we go. Cool. 
Cool. So I'm really hyped for the GTA Definitive Edition thing. It's funny because I've played those games like so many times um, when I was like younger, but and I don't know why I'm actually excited to play them again. I think I really loved those like open worlds, so I'm kind of curious to see how they hold up with um, like the large, the longer sort of what do they call it? draw distance and um, some of the new graphics. They, I don't know. I feel like they've, they've they, judging by the little trailer they've had. I feel like they did a really good job sort of remastering it and making it look kind of fresh so I really like that I th I'm super keen on that but I also want to play Far Cry that that game looks super cool um, although I've heard from reviewers that it's actually pretty I don't know it's kind of the same as a lot of the other games oh I put that in the wrong layer ah god damn oh well I'll just deal with it very cool um, I recently played Far Cry 4 again and I, I enjoyed the hell out of it I, I do love that game. It's been a long time since I played it, but um, it still feels really fresh and really kind of, um, yeah, just really enjoyable. So yeah, I really should get into, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I really want to get into Far Cry 6. It looks like a lot of fun. I don't know why I sort of went this way with this sort of line. But um, yeah, it looks all right. No, it doesn't, I'll, I'll get rid of it. I want more consistency, there we go. I feel like these kind of sketches, it's sort of, you're constantly making a decision of, do you wanna have more consistency or do you wanna have less? Do you wanna vary it up a little bit by sort of warping elements and making them different sizes or do you wanna try and rein it back in? Um, I don't like this, zooming out there just for a second. I'm going to get rid of this particular spike, stud, pe emo piercing. <laughs> One day I'll figure out what to call it. Um, cool, there we go, that'll do. So I usually, if you're thinking it's looking pretty rough, you're probably right, it is looking pretty rough actually. But um, I usually clean up and polish up my um, drawings off stream. So I usually, yeah, I don't know, I soften, smooth out a lot of lines, I don't tend to do that on stream because it's pretty boring. I don't think people really want to see that. Or maybe you do. If you do, let me know. Um, do not be afraid to let me know. There we go. Cool. Just a few more studs for our leaves here. Then we move on to the next part of the sketch. So what should we do there? My zoom's going bananas, it's taking me all over the place. Um, let's go here. Get rid of that background. So those piercings are nice front and center. Okay, I think we're starting off well. I think this is this is a weird, it's a weird sketch, but that's what I like. I like weird. Weird is what I'm going for. Um, what I want to do now I'm going to add another layer, but before I do that, I'm going to merge some of these, I think, just for layer management. That will make a thicker line than that. So I want to go something a little bit more sort of gooey and slimy, like that. We'll see how this looks. I'm not sold on it yet, but I feel like it needed just something something a little bit more random and all over the place. Oh, no, that's too easy. Let's go like that. I missed. <laughs> cool. Um, I might even go, nah, I'll, I'll keep it like that. That's okay. So I'm trying to tuck these lines in those spaces there. There we go. 
Awesome. So for those watching, um, know that I do have all of these streams on YouTube as well. So um, if you want to see everything I do, you can actually find everything I do from emloidartist.com. Uh, that's my website. I put a lot of work into it actually. I realized the other day I do spend a lot of time sort of making this look nice and spick and polished. So um, you can see everything I do live by pressing the live button. You can see all the products I make. So I make some really weird, funky products. Um, usually using this sort of stained glass style you might see on their website right there. Um, I have a Skillshare course. It's a great way to support me if you um, don't have a lot of coin to spare. I know that feeling. But um, also I have Patreon. I have, you can subscribe to my newsletters. But um, yeah, the thing I'd love to show, if I go to this live button right at the top there, um, yeah, I have. You can actually find a, a link to this particular channel here, but you can also see a link to my YouTube channel as well. So you're welcome to uh, click that and explore some of the other content I've made. So that sort of becomes like an archive for everything I do. And I have a Discord channel. So um, not many people are in it yet because I'm pretty small. But basically in that Discord channel, um, you can actually put your artwork there and I'll happily sort of share it on stream and sort of yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of fun. I like the idea of this being a sort of collaborative um, environment where people can kind of share their work. All right, that, that's something that really excites me. So you're absolutely welcome to, um, yeah, basically, you know what, let's go for a different overlay. Let's go for purple swirl. That's a bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm big on switching up the overlays. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to share your artwork there. And yeah, it's, if you want me to, I'll also share it on stream. Just let me know um, in the same kind of message as well. Um, I've actually found some really amazing artists. I say found, I've met some really amazing artists um, on stream. So there's some really talented people out there with such amazing skill in art. And um, it's really cool to see. You know what I might do? I've realized that I kind of prefer these leaves when the line is sort of uh, curving this way as opposed to curving this way. I don't know why I sort of changed it to be that way, but I'm feeling now, I'm kind of keen to quickly fix that up. Let's go like this. Shouldn't take too long. There we go. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll just quickly go like this. We'll see how it looks. So I'll kind of, I'll sharpen these lines a bit and I'll just sort of cut into them like that. And I'll probably smooth them out later when I've got some spare time off stream. But for now, I'm just kind of getting the general idea of the sketch, I think, down. But yeah, already I'm kind of liking that, actually. I think that looks kind of cool. Um, I say I was going to smooth this out, but yeah, it's bugging me. My OCD is getting the better of me. There we go. Cool. Uh, awesome. I might do these another time, but I don't know. Maybe I like them that way. Hmm. Let's go like this. Sharpen this one a little bit. I should just use one of those brushes which has a bit of a tail, but I can never find one I like. That's that's the problem. Um, I know you can buy them as well, brushes, but I don't know. I feel like if I go down that path where I I buy brushes, I'll never stop. I'll just constantly be buying brushes, um, spending a fortune on them. Okay. So, yeah, I think we're making pretty good progress here. They kind of look like surfboards, actually. <laughs> really spiky surfboards. Um, let's add a few bits, a few lines, just for some extra detail grab people's attention, uh, make it look a bit more striking. Very cool. Yeah, what was I talking about? Um, oh God, I've knocked my camera. There we go. Let's get that back on frame. Cool. Uh, I was talking about yeah, GTA, GTA Definitive Edition. I'm, I'm super excited about that for some reason. Um, I always loved those. I feel like with GTA, some of the worlds that they were made, they were building became too big, especially GTA 5, like in a way, because 
the worlds of those earlier games are so much smaller, I felt like you were more likely to explore them and kind of, I don't know, just sort of get to know it in a sense. But with those um, larger worlds, I don't know, I just... I don't know, it just didn't really work for me. I mean, the detail in them is incredible. And I know clearly the actual work that goes into them is just in, insane. And I always loved the sound design of GTA games. And I feel like the sound design of GTA 5 in particular is just, it's kind of a masterpiece. Um, it's really cool. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really loved sort of the smaller kind of... Um, I suppose world designs of the earlier games just felt more focused there wasn't too much fluff in a way I feel I feel like you can say that a lot of about a lot of sort of open world games there's a lot of fluff in many of them it's like Assassin's Creed they're like the king of sort of fluffy um, worlds in a sense mind you it kind of works for their games um, cool yeah it looks a bit better um, so now I've got to figure out what I'm gonna do what the next layer is going to be. So what should I do? Not everything has to be connected either. What I could do is have something kind of floating. Um, if in doubt, I always just draw like a cube or a cylinder or something, or maybe both. And then when I have like a floating element, I can kind of build and connect things off of that. Or I can kind of doodle within that. It tends to look pretty cool. Wonderful. Okay. So I don't want it to be too uh, intrusive to this sort of empty area here because I want to fill that with different kind of sketches and different doodles. But um, essentially, I am kind of going to... It's going to be quite prominent, but not too prominent. I feel like drawing and art creation is always... It's always such an exercise in balance. You kind of want to get things just right. Now, do I like that kind of curve in the middle? I don't think so, actually. I think I'm going to embrace a sort of more jaggedy kind of style. And the reason being is because I, I feel like there's already a lot of organic and sort of round shapes in the sketch. So I kind of want to start introducing a more sort of straight edges and sort of harsher lines. Uh, once again, it's all about that sort of contrast. Um, so if you're, un if you're unsure what I'm making here, I might actually show you one of the sketches I made earlier in this style. So this is actually something I did. I believe it, I started working on it in the third stream that I did. And um, yeah, I kind of like it. So I call it stratum. So basically they're inspired by the, like the layers of the earth. If, if you've ever seen like a cliff face where like you can see different layers, um, it's inspired by that. And so it's the idea is that you just start from a single line and you kind of keep building out further and further and you just add more and more complexity as you go. Um, with colors, I always try to kind of create a bit of contrast there as well. So um, I, I kind of see colors a little bit like a jigsaw not a jigsaw, what do you call it? A Sudoku puzzle, where you're constantly kind of, um, I don't know, you kind of, kind of fit them in the right spot, otherwise the sketch stops working. So that, that's my kind of goal. Uh, Dr. O says, hello. Hello, Dr. O. How are you, my friend? I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah. What have you been up to? It's been a while since I've chatted with you, actually. Um, yeah. Um, I've been super busy recently with work and with um, other weird stuff in relation to moving. But um, yeah, what are you? Yeah, what's happening with you? Let's go. Let's start making these lines a little bit more sort of converging in the middle there. I think that's a cool idea. Make it sort of fit the perspective. There we go. I'm good, just super busy with work and things. Hope you've been well. I've been super well, man. Um, yeah, in many respects, um, yeah, I've been pretty, I'm, I've been very well, actually. Uh, it's good seeing Melbourne return to normal again. I think that's super cool. Um, so for those who might live overseas, um, yeah, basically Melbourne 
and the state and the city in which I live is finally coming out of another lockdown. We've had about is it six lockdowns? <laughs> I can't even remember anymore. But um, yeah, basically, what's happening now is that people are starting to catch up with each other again. So a lot of suburbs have been sort of separated to sort of um, sort of distances. So yeah, it's interesting. Dr. O says, get ready for crazy Karen's at 6 p.m. Friday. Um, yeah, luckily, the place in which I work, the place that shall not be named, has decided to open on Saturday. But I actually think that might even be worse because we're just going to have like all those zombies just lining up outside the window. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be mad, man. Um, already we have such a traffic buildup. I've got all these people like calling up and going, when are you open? When are you open? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> but now we do. And, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's going to be, I think all hell is going to completely break loose at my workplace. And, um, you know what? It's good. It's a good thing. Uh, one cannot stay in lockdown forever. Let's go like this. I guess it's good. You don't have to stretch. Yeah, it is true. Like I, I would hate to sort of, especially at nighttime. I feel like if you launch a store, at night because you're also dealing with the fatigue you might develop during the day so like um yeah I, I totally agree with the decision i think it's really cool but um yeah no like in a way i feel sorry for those <laughs> those businesses that do open like right on friday as soon as um the restrictions lift but in a way i feel like it could be a cool kind of maybe it's the birth of like a tradition maybe this time every year to celebrate the coming out of COVID, they open up and um, at 6 p.m. and all hell just breaks loose in retail stores. I'd be down for that. Make an event of it, you know. Make it like a cool public holiday. I feel like there should be a public holiday to celebrate the, um, I don't know, defeat of, it's not even the defeated, but like um, our surviving this pandemic in a way in which is uh, somewhat kept our country intact. <laughs> Knowing Australians, we will want a public holiday out of spend. Yeah, like that's, dude, I agree. I really think um, there's going to be a lot of pressure for it. But um, at the same time, I think uh, politicians are more concerned about just kind of keep the economy running, which is probably a, a wise thing. Um, here we go. I, I do like these cubes actually. I think this is interesting. I do like the fact that there's sort of this other other perspective that sits inside the cube. <laughs> um, I feel like that's really weird. It's kind of, I feel like that would grab your attention if you're a viewer of the art piece. Sometimes breaking the rules can be a really nice way to grab someone's attention. Um, and it sort of just happened sort of instinctively there. I wasn't really thinking about it. Um, but I like, I like it. Sometimes the best stuff comes out that way. Um, is this going to be a desktop background? It's actually the right dimensions for a desktop background. So, um, yeah, I think it will be. So it's probably going to be one of those artworks I create over a variety of streams. So like, um, it's actually funny, like if, because I remember you were there when I finished that, um, other piece that I made which was going to be like a wallpaper that I give away for free I'm um, not this one <laughs> this is a weird sketch I did um, in the previous stream but um where are we uh, this one here so I'm still looking to release that I'm going to make it like a promotional giveaway kind of thing so anyone who follows my stream will just be able to scan like a QR code it'll take you to a page and you can download all these um, wallpapers but um yeah, I've decided to change up some of the colors um, going on the advice of Spinzy. Um, and so I've added a few more colors actually, which I'm really liking. So I added this one, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure how well it works as a desktop, as a mobile phone background though, because when you've got white text on a background that has lots of whites, it tends to be very, um, how do I put it? It's, it's, it's really hard to see the text. So I might have to create some sort of mask or gradient over that. Um, but yeah, I've sort of been doing like greens and reds. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've much appreciated. 
Yeah, um, this one actually changed a little bit. I added a bit more bluer sort of tones to the actual blocks there. Um, but I wanted a nice sort of greeny blue one uh, to go with some of the purpley and red stuff. Um, I do like this one. I think it's quickly becoming my favorite. It's very, it kind of reminds me of autumn in a way. So it's like autumn leaves. It's, um, yeah. So I'm trying to make like a good selection of colors for this one. Uh, but this particular sketch that we're working on now, this Straton background, um, I'll probably just keep it as one, um, just one singular background with not too many colors because this is the type of sketch where adding like a whole new uh, color range is probably going to take me like fucking years. <laughs> so like, um, cause it's these particular sketches, they actually take a lot of work as you're going to learn. There's just so many different elements to it. Really cool. Um, there we are. I think my neighbor is actually a Twitch streamer. Um, <laughs> I think I've come to this conclusion because he's always making like extremely loud sort of sounds. Uh, it's like he's trying to like hype up his audience, um, like playing CSGO or something. And so every now and then you'll just hear like some massive scream in the background <laughs> or some obscenity. Um, mind you, I suppose people do that on their own. They don't have to be streaming on Twitch to um, do that kind of thing. But yeah, every now and then I just hear these sort of sounds, which makes me think, oh, you, you are a Twitch streamer, aren't you? I feel like everyone's becoming a Twitch streamer. Um, I feel like I'm just doing the normie thing and just, yeah, being that guy. Um, everyone's a Twitch streamer now. Maybe that's a good thing. I'm actually thinking of uh, streaming on Instagram as well. I've been saying that for months, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's um, feeling like a better idea because a lot of people on Instagram I sort of post these stories, but I don't think they really get the idea of what I'm doing. So it might be fun to actually do on there. But the cool thing about doing on Instagram is that it's all sort of like in that portrait mode. So if you're doing that like weird um, portrait 16 by nine, so that, that would be a cool challenge to play around with. A Twitch streamer or a TikToker? Oh, I, I would love to stream live on TikTok, but you have to have like, how many fans do you have to have? I think you have to have like 10,000 fans to stream on TikTok. So like, yeah, that, that's a long way for me. Also, I've noticed like it's, to be an artist on TikTok is actually really hard. Like a lot, there's some really good artists out there making amazing artwork, but um, they just don't quite get the same traction that you get from, I don't know, hot chicks dancing in tracky pants. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's basically what seems to work on TikTok. Um, Okay, let's go like that. Hmm. So I'll add a few more of these blocks. I'm not sure if I will. I'm actually considering sort of having the block hiding behind this leaf a little bit. To do that, I might add another layer so I can kind of experiment a bit. But I'm going to go like this, just like that. Okay, and then what I might do actually, I'll kind of go, yeah, I think this will this will look good if I do it like that. So you actually won't see this part at all. That's gonna be hidden behind the leaf. But hopefully, just adds a little bit of, a little bit more chaos to the artwork. I feel like, yeah, with these, with these particular sketches, you do want to have a healthy bit of chaos. Um, oh, a Twitch streamer or a TikToker? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like um, the question, uh, Dr. O, wh what one should I become? Um, don't think I can hack it on TikTok. I do have a TikTok channel. You're actually welcome to follow me there if you want. It's, um, you know, if you figure out the name, I'll be really impressed. It's, um, yeah, it's um, a pretty unusual name for my brand. Um, I'm joking. It's Emloid Artist. 
Um, but yeah, I sort of posted a few weird little clips where um, I did that kind of reveal thing. So you know that, um, what do they call it? Jump cuts and you kind of go like this and then like everything changes and it's filled with color. And it took me ages to make it because I get so fussy and obsessive with these kind of kinds of things. But um, yeah, I, I think it got like a couple of hundred views and that was it. And so I was like, eh, this isn't really what I was aiming for. I was kind of hoping I'd build an audience on there and drag them over here. But um, now I'm thinking I'm going to cheat a bit and pay, pay for some Instagram ads um, with a giveaway of those. Um, you're, you're still yet to download TikTok, Dr. O. Um, that's probably the best way to be. Um, do not download it. It's addictive. If the, the moment you start scrolling, you will get stuck in there. It's just like an endless loop of um, addictive videos. It's And some of them are really good. Don't get me wrong. I, there are some really amazing creators out there who just do really cool stuff. But the majority of it, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit... Because it's all about being relatable. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a relatable kind of guy. <laughs> um, I feel like my Instagram is all TikTok videos. Ain't it? Yeah. Instagram is one of the weirdest platforms. Like, um, it, it's funny because like when Facebook bought Instagram, they sort of said that they weren't going to just turn it into Facebook with like um, all of those, you know, just creating profiles and, um, you know, like, yeah, creating profiles and doing heaps and really focusing on targeting, targeted ads and stuff like that. Um, and what's really funny is that they kind of turned it into pretty much Facebook, really. There's a few differences, but um, not many. Um, and then TikTok became big, and they sort of tried to turn Instagram into TikTok, which is weird. So I feel like Instagram is this sort of weird jack-of-all-trades when it comes to social media. And it doesn't... I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of people, they want the old Instagram back, you know, where everything was hashtag-based. And if you wanted to get found, you just had to use the right hashtag and you just had to sort of, um, I don't know, connect with people in a real way. But now it's all just like algorithm based, just like Facebook. And yeah, I think people are annoyed by that. Um, I reckon there'll be a new social media network that comes out in like the next three or four years. And it will be sort of like a traditional version. It'll be like a copy of how Instagram used to be. And it'll become huge. And then like Facebook will try and copy that with, <laughs> they'll turn Instagram back into what it was and maybe to some mild success. But that's my theory. That, that's, what, that's my theory on what's gonna happen with social media. It's funny, I heard that Snapchat was still a thing the other day. And I was like, wow, really people still use that? Um, it's funny, like it just sort of left the vocabulary of like everyday people. Um, I don't know anyone who actually uses it anymore, but um, apparently it's still around and they're making glasses or something. I don't know. Um, I don't really like this particular um, block thing. I think what I'll do if I push it in a bit like that and then I'll go like this. This may work, it may not. But it was just something compositionally I didn't really like about this block, so I'm going to kind of change it. Um, I don't use it either. Yeah, I've, I've never used it. I've actually no idea what, um, yeah, really what it is. <laughs> um, I think Snapchat was like, if you know Instagram, you'll know there's like those stories that you have. Um, and I think that's what it is. I think it's basically just... Um, I think it made a sort of dent in social media from being just stories, but, um, and then everyone sort of copied it. But then when reels became big, um, I don't know, everyone started copying that as well. It's very strange. I heard this rumor that um, Facebook was going to, um, it was actually going to change, it was going to sort of come up with an umbrella brand. Um, and that Facebook, so basically the name of Facebook as a company was going to change into something else. And Facebook was just going to be one of its products. So like a big focus of their industry, their, their business was actually going to be more Oculus and stuff like that. But um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know. That that was sort of a rumor that came out a couple of days ago, and I wouldn't be surprised if it comes true because it makes a lot of sense. Like Facebook is a really weird name for a company that is also getting into VR and AR. Um, Doctor O says it was a high school thing, but after that, I stopped using it. Yeah, never used it. I completely missed that one. Uh, I completely missed the bandwagon on Snapchat. But um, I think it was all about stories. I think that was it. Vine, yeah, because that's the thing, isn't it? Vine was. Um, Vine is a thing that TikTok was inspired by, I think, but just incorporated like an algorithm. And um, that's kind of what I think is going to happen with Instagram. So there'll be a platform that's inspired by how Instagram used to work. And um, it'll be, yeah, it'll sort of bring that back and it'll become popular. And yeah, but who knows? Yeah, I never got into Vine, but I, yeah, apparently it was cool. I know a lot of people still watch a lot of those sort of Vine videos and they're still kind of, they sort of became kind of like memes and cultural icons. Uh, let's go like this. But that was sort of another thing I missed. It was kind of weird. There was a whole period in my life where I just didn't really do social media. And there's a truth that I only ever really started doing social media really it was because I wanted to sort of grow a following with art and I've I'm so bad at social media that it never really happened. <laughs> but um, yeah, like um, there's certainly a skill to it. There's certainly a skill to sort of building a following and connecting with people. And um, yeah, I, I haven't given up on it. I'm still kind of plugging away at Instagram every now and then. I had a very sort of grassroots style of um, sort of building my following that I did like a month ago. And um, that was where I was just sort of Finding follow, finding artists who are similar to me, and then just sort of approaching their their followers and saying, oh, "Hey, how are you? <laughs> I exist," and it actually worked. I, there was a point where I was making about ten followers a day on Instagram just by doing that methodology. But you have to be really disciplined, and in a time where I'm kind of distracted by sort of settling into my new place, um, there's a truth that you have to have the time. If you don't have the time, you're probably not going to do it. So that's my only social media strategy that actually worked, and it was a lot of work. So I'm thinking of just um, pulling the plug and buying a bunch of Instagram ads. Um, so I still binge on the Vine compilations. They're the best. You can actually binge Vine. How do, they, how do they do it? Is it just on, like, YouTube or something? I imagine that's probably how they would do it. But that's, that's interesting. It's cool that they're still available. Um, okay, let's go like this. Wonderful. Wasn't yeah on YouTube. Okay, there you go. So that's where it is. That that's good. I wonder how it got there. I wonder if people just like recorded the videos like through like screen grabs and then just put them on there, or if all the the content creators sort of did it themselves. That's interesting. I, I just sort of imagine this sort of cult following who sort of went into a sort of archival mode the moment Vine sort of started disappearing, um, which is kind of cool. But I always think about if some if something like TikTok did that, if they just stopped all of a sudden, um, what would happen to all those videos? Like, would people kind of keep them? Would they... Yeah, like what happens to all that sort of artistic content that people make? Because there are some really amazing art stuff on there. Do people make compilations of TikTok videos? Because there'd be like thousands of them, just thousands. Um, be really weird. I reckon every time a video platform dies, you'll see a huge surge of videos on YouTube from people trying to sort of save and archive all their content. I wonder if that's a thing. Maybe. So there you go. Some cubes have been drawn. Um, it adds a bit of chaos to the mix. I think it's time to move on to the next thing, whatever that is. And I think what I need now is some sort of vine. I feel like a vine is kind of what's needed here. So I'll probably plan out my vines this time. So I'm going to sort of merge all of these together just for just so I can keep track. And this is actually going to be, I'm going to lower the opacity here and then I'm going to plot out my vines. So I'm going to go 
like like this and I might even extend these vines out a little bit like that so these aren't going to be the final drawing this is actually how most artists who do things digitally actually do things they sort of plan out their drawing and then they kind of work off that but I'm just not diligent enough to do that kind of thing I really should though because I feel like you do get better results when you kind of do this but um, let's do that so I'm going super real here so Dr. Rose says a lot of the vine creators move to YouTube and I think they move all their content on there I reckon that would be how it has to work right they have to sort of do it individually because surely no one else is that diligent of a fan to do it for them when it's just like a two second clip well maybe they are I don't know it's a tough one um, okay let's go like this very neat cool um, awesome I'll probably switch to an intermission sometime soon um, I'm planning to sort of finish the stream at 11 I think that's I, I usually only go for two hours at the moment um, but Yes, that's, that's, what's, that's what's coming next. So in the next part of this stream, I'm going to do some cool little vines. I'm actually thinking of taking inspiration. The vines might just take me through to the rest of the stream, I think, because I'm exploring um, this sort of conceptualization idea that I had from my random generated sketches. And so I've been exploring vines a bit more. So I like the idea of sort of combining vines with shapes now. So there's things like non-uniform non object ends, so it's basically a vine, but there's an object on either end. Um, there's also things like um, these kind of strange tight serial objects that are kind of stretched around a vine as well. So these are things I'm kind of planning to explore a bit more in my sketches, just to add a bit more complexity and a little bit more di diversity, I suppose. Um, and I'm trying to come up with names for them as well because I feel like when you do that It's easier to kind of talk about them and reference them. So that's probably something I'm going to do. I'm going to add some vines it's <laughs> uh, Which is a good word for it um, actually especially after this conversation um, There you go But yeah, I'm looking for the I'm looking forward to that inevitable um, Instagram clone that comes out that's the thing I'm really excited for. Hopefully it happens, but you'll never know. Um, okay, let's go like, let's create this vine. We'll create our first one, then I'll probably switch to an intermission. Uh, let's go like this. There we go, so I'm trying to do them in really nice, consistent strokes like that although I say like that and I'm actually not happy with how I finished it there but let's give it a shot oh I like that one actually it's kind of it's a bit quirky because it sort of becomes a bit bulbous towards the end there um, and then we'll go like this and I might just, I'm not sure how I'm going to do the ends. I might actually try and turn this vine into something a little bit more complicated. So I might go like that, turn it into a sort of pipe kind of thing. But we'll soon see. Now if I go like that, I can kind of still keep that sort of pipe-ish kind of feeling. Maybe I'll have something pouring out of the pipes. I think that's kind of cool. Um, or maybe I'll have some kind of flower or something. <laughs> hmm, that doesn't look too bad. Maybe I'll do that. Um, I'll keep that there just for reference. Um, and what I'll do, because I'm Oh yeah, I'm really settled on the vine, con the, the cylinder pipe kind of thing. I think straws is probably a good name for it. So I'm going to go like this. 
slowly sort of mold this and morph it into a cylinder. Just like that. Yeah, I do love making these artworks actually. There's something so therapeutic and relaxing about it. I encourage anyone who hasn't to certainly have, get into doodling. <laughs> doodling is just one of the most relaxing and just calming things you'll ever come across. Um, and there's something just super enjoyable about seeing the end result as well, just seeing everything sort of come together. That's really fun. So I'm gonna take a quick intermission. Um, for those who've never seen an intermission of mine before, it's basically some of my music and a bunch of adverts for some of the stuff I do. So you're welcome to um, check it out. And um, yeah, I'll be back shortly with some more um, stratum sketches. So I'll see you very soon. Adios.
and I'm back. Let's get started. Um, cool, so let's continue with our weird vine things, our cylinder pipe vines, and we shall, yeah, keep adding to this sketch. Here we go. I hope you all enjoyed that break as much as me. Here we go. Wonderful. So yeah, we're just sort of tracing over our um, concept layer so that we can kind of, the concept layer is there just to guide me and try and get help me get the composition right. But now we're going to try and get the final, final outline on there. I know a lot of people do a lot more sort of rough sketches than I do. And um, I really should, Maybe I should try it out a bit more. But I feel like it doesn't make for really pleasant aesthetics when you're watching it because whenever you're watching someone do like a rough outline, you're always watching them do this really faint kind of sketch that you can barely see. Because they always draw it in this sort of like, um, in this kind of color, a sort of gray. <laughs> um, I don't know, I want my overlays, you know, what's, what's the word? I want my thumbnails on Twitch to look super bright and super bold so that people are more likely to click them. But um, so that's one of the reasons I don't tend to do it. But at the same time, I do think it's probably the superior way of doing digital art. There we go. Cool. So now I'm gonna try and get rid of this, I think. So we want to try and create the feeling that this pipe is kind of going like that. I might get rid of this line actually. There we go, cool. I think that looks a lot nicer now. And then we just have to do this little line at the top and we finished one more vine. One more vine pipe cylinder. There we go. So being a really nice summer, um, I'm proud to say that I've already got hay fever. <laughs> uh, it didn't take long. Um, but basically, yeah, like I can't go outside now without just getting completely like, just completely sneezing my head off. Um, it's insane. I think like the flowers in particular have just boomed like really nicely in my in my backyard and um it's really nice aesthetically but um biologically my body doesn't seem to be agreeing with it it's um i'm never going to get rid of it either because there's all these bees like hanging around them i don't want to destroy some of the only stuff they actually get to um use to pollinate dr o you get it as well oh my god dude um I think I, I think I could give you a run for your money on that statement there. I reckon my hay fever can get pretty bad, dude. Like, um, I've certainly taken days off work because of hay fever. <laughs> it's that bad. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, man. Like, I think a lot of people in Melbourne get it. Um, and I don't know why. I feel like, I don't know, I, I, I have a suspicion that maybe people in Melbourne get it perhaps worse than other cities. And I remember reading an article a long time ago to the point where I barely remember it really. But um, I remember someone saying that there was these sort of crops just sort of near this area of Melbourne where the wind is sort of funneled. And so in a way, like um, that tends to be a big contributor to it. But I don't know how much I believe that. I always remember there was this thing a couple of years ago and there were these people who sort of had, what was it? It was like thunderstorm asthma or something. It was really unusual, but like there was this one time where like there was this thunderstorm and I think it was like in the middle of summer or like spring or something. And like so many people just sort of went out into their front yards and just started like they could not breathe because of this weird sort of thunderstorm 
asthma. Um, I love telling non-Australians about thunderstorm <laughs> asthma. They're so fascinated. Dude, you're going to have to tell me about it. I can barely remember it. All I remember is like on the news stories, there were people like climbing out of their houses, like um, preparing themselves for a paramedic in their front yard because there were so many people after this thunderstorm that were suffering from thunderstorm asthma. And like basically they just couldn't breathe and like were really struggling. And some people even died from it, which is awful. But like um, it was such a weird, weird thing to happen. Um, and I feel like we made a really big deal of it, perhaps a bigger deal than we should have. And, um, <laughs> and I, I feel like COVID-19 sort of, um, I don't know, maybe it sort of brushed it under the carpet a little bit. But um, I mean, it is certainly the more serious thing. But yeah, it's, it's thunder I haven't really heard anything about thunderstorm asthma since. It's really weird. I haven't heard any, I haven't heard anything um, since this pandemic about thunderstorm asthma killed about 10 people wow my god 10 four, 10 10 people wow god that's insane i thought it was only like four or five or something but um or two or three but people it was pretty serious but now we have now we monitor for it all the time oh wow is that true interesting um oh god yeah i should look into it it that was such a strange time like just on the news everyone like really panicking about thunderstorm asthma um really unusual it feels like a blast of the past because it <laughs> felt like so long ago, but it actually wasn't. It was, it wasn't that long ago at all. I think it was probably like two, maybe three years at the most. Okay, let's go like that. Awesome. So now, That's weird. I started shaking the table there and I thought there was like an earthquake, but it was just me. Um, I have these speakers, right? And um, they have these like lights that sort of tell you that they're switched on. And it's a good thing. You, you want these lights. They're um, so you don't use unnecessary power or anything. It's, it's a really good thing to have on a monitor. Because sometimes, like your monitors, especially like your good ones, they can use a lot of power. But um, they're really annoying as well. These, because <laughs> they're so bright. And like sometimes I use these monitors when I'm like watching TV and stuff. Um, so what I've got in front of my um, my lights are just these pebbles, <laughs> these little rocks. So sometimes when I shake the table, they sort of like just kind of like um, you can kind of hear them sort of rattling. Um, I really should find something better to cover up those um, lights, but I don't want to. I don't want anything that's going to be too hard to remove or that covers it too well, because otherwise, I, you know, I won't be able to see them. So, yeah, sometimes I shake the table and I think there's an earthquake because these little pebbles are just like making all this ruckus. But um, no, no, just me. Um, you know what? I've realised that I don't like this direction here. I'm going to go. I'm going to make the vine, this cylinder thing, sort of pop out in this direction. So now the vine's kind of going like that. I think that works a bit better. Um, yeah, cool. I do like this particular vine. I think that was really cool. I like the way it kind of tucks underneath itself. That's really neat. Um, cool. So I feel like, um, yeah, I've, I've recently been watching that new subscription service, Binge, and um, I think it's a pretty expensive subscription service in comparison to the others out there. It's like a good like $14 or something, and you just for like the standard HD kind of um, resolution. But it's really cool. I, I originally downloaded it so I could watch the Godfather trilogy which um I hadn't watched that for a good probably 10 years actually and I forgot how goddamn good that that film is if you've never seen the Godfather um yeah you, you haven't really watched the film <laughs> it's got one of the coolest soundtracks and um some of the acting is just amazing 
But um, yeah, something really cool as well about the storyline. It's not rocket science. It's just a really simple story. But um, actually, no, no, I'll take that back. There are some really clever things they do. Sort of subtle, sort of artistic motives and things that they sort of do. That is actually kind of cool, and you don't see it often in film anymore. But yeah, that's really awesome. But in order, so anyway, in order to get that, I had to download this binge service, and um, it's really cool. I've realised there's all the HBO stuff that I used to watch like religiously, um, like The Wire and Sopranos, and um, the one that I've actually started watching again is like True Detective, and it's got like. Um, Matt McConaughey and um, who's the other guy it's got um, oh, I can't remember who's that other actor oh, god it'll come to me um, hopefully it will but it's really good it's such a good show um, the second series was really bad because it's a completely different set of characters and completely different sort of crime story that they tell but um, the first season is just utterly amazing and um the character that Matthew McConaughey plays is just one of the coolest and most ridiculous, de like, also depressing characters you'll ever see <laughs> on a TV show. But um, he has some of the best lines. Um, he's a really weird character, but um, yeah, if you've never watched it, I thoroughly encourage it. Um, and that's another show that I hadn't watched for a good, like, probably about five years, that, that one. But... Um, really good so I've been watching all sorts of rubbish <laughs> and um, I say rubbish it's actually amazing some really good stuff I'm actually thinking of watching The Sopranos again uh, it's been a long time since I watched that and um, god it's good and they've actually got a film um, like what is it Saints of Newark or something and it's about like a young Tony Soprano he's like the main um, character in The Sopranos but what's really interesting is that um, the guy who plays this younger version of Tony Soprano is actually the actor it's actually the actor's son so the actor of Tony Soprano was like James Gandolfini I think that, I think that's right and um, yeah they've got like his son playing the same role his father did which is kind of interesting um I don't think it's going to be a very good film. <laughs> I don't think it can be because the series was just so excellent. And I feel like those characters work really well in a TV sort of series kind of format, but I just can't see them working well in a film. But um, I don't know. I'll keep an open mind. I'll, I'll, I might check it out. Um, I might actually get to see these films in cinemas now. That's really cool. I'm looking forward to that. I can't remember the last time I went to a cinema. I think the last film I saw in a cinema actually would have been, oh, what was it? If it wasn't like that last Star Wars film, which, um, and you can fight me on this, I think that last Star Wars film was garbage. Um, but it was, oh, it was like one of those DC films. And it was like, um, I can't remember what it was. I can't remember the name of the the character. Um, but it was like some kid who would say some phrase and he turns into like this sort of superhero. But he keeps like the intelligence of like a dumb child. Um, and <laughs> it was actually pretty good, I think. I, I remember it being kind of entertaining, but I just cannot remember the name of it. Um, but yeah, that was... I think that's the last thing I actually saw in a cinema because like in Australia, we haven't... Well, in Victoria, at least, since COVID, we haven't really had the opportunity to go to cinemas because they're kind of a big spreader of COVID-19. So that's a thing. Um, yeah, so it'll be good to see something again. There we go. I wonder if you have to wear masks, though, in cinemas. Maybe you do. You'd hope so. Maybe they have like little shields like behind the chairs now, but then you wouldn't be able to see anything. So that's a, <laughs> I'm sure that wouldn't do that. That would be really ridiculous. Um, okay, so yeah, we're coming close to I think the end of the stream tonight, and I'm kind of happy with how this has progressed. 
yeah, these stratum pieces take a while, but at the same time, God, they're, they're kind of fun to do and they're kind of relaxing. So I'll definitely continue this one. Um, but yeah, like it's one of those things you'll see like different little bits of layers added each stream. And um, mind you, we probably did half of the outline, which is pretty good. Um, so that's pretty good for this, for this sketch. It, these do take just ages. Um, let's go like that. Oh, no, that's too thick. So I'm really looking forward to this new feature in Procreate where um, basically you can save a size of your brush so you can quickly snap between your popular or your most favorite sort of um, brush sizes. Sounds like a super lame feature, but um, if you're into Procreate, oh my God, it's gonna be so cool. Um, I think it's been requested by, requested a lot by fans, but I could be wrong. But usually that's why they add features because the they seem to be quite supportive of their fan base and feedback. I've heard they're actually going to introduce a um, a sort of seamless pattern generator as well, like sometime in the future. Probably not for a while, but um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that in Procreate because at the moment I use um, this other app. You might have seen it in other streams, but um, it's a bit glitchy and it doesn't last very well. So I'm kind of I'm looking forward to the day that Procreate do it because when they do, yeah, when they do things, when they add features, it's always stable and it's always really well implemented. That's the reason why this app has become such a such an addiction for me. Actually, I, I use this app so much now. It's actually funny. Like the other day, I had to I had to make a PDF file. <laughs> And all I, had to, all I wanted to do was like a simple like A4 piece of paper. But I wanted to take like, because I wanted to print it off. I wanted like one A4 piece of paper taking up half the page and another A4 piece of paper taking up the other half because I wanted these small kind of things. And um, I tried doing it in like pages, which is like Apple's version of um, Microsoft Word. And like, I just couldn't do it, couldn't do it. But then I did it in Procreate and it worked fine. So, so I'm actually just using this app for basically everything now. Um, it's weird. Um, it's amazing how well this app actually works. Wow, this one looks kind of organic in a way. Like it looks like a um, some kind of alien creature there. I like it. I like that. Um, let's now add, we'll do this one. And I might actually make it curve in a bit. Hmm, I don't like how I've done the cylinder end here. Let's just polish that up a bit better. Slowly carve that in, make it look nice and yeah, it's kind of weird, sort of turning back in on itself. There's a truth that I always look at these vines and these shapes as sort of like their own characters in a way. <laughs> it's it's very weird. Um, I feel like I should start doing like little, I don't know, like children's books or something, where these weird abstract things become characters. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go into my my composition layer there. I'm going to do this again because I feel like that's not going to no, we, we want to go a different direction to this one. So let's go like this. Perfect. That'll work. That'll work a bit better. But I will actually change it just a bit. Yeah, that, that's the right direction now. Cool. Um, now that we've got that, let's let's try and get the right contour. There we are. 
you know the concentration is real when I just stop talking. <laughs> it's um got to get these pipes right. That's uh, crucially important. Uh, it isn't. So I'm thinking I'll probably start streaming on Saturdays. Um, there's something about streaming on Fridays which just doesn't work for me. There's always something I need to do, um, either that day or the next day, and it just becomes a little bit too tedious. But I'm kind of in this luxurious position at the moment where I've got Saturdays off. I don't know how I managed to pull that off, but um, somehow my my manager's okayed it. And um, so now, with Saturdays off, I can kind of... Yeah, I can kind of do those streams with a bit more, being a bit more relaxed, I think. So that'll be super cool. Um, and I think Saturday, I don't know, it's a bit more of a fun time to do these sketches. Um, mind you, with lockdown lifting, I think everyone's going to start going out on Saturday night again. So <laughs> I don't know, like um, there's a question of whether or not I'll stick or adhere to it all that much. But um, we'll find out. But yeah, so expect the next Doodle Blob stream to happen on Saturday night, not on Friday night. I think that's probably what I'm leaning towards at the moment. This one is not working. Let's go like that. Cool. There we are. I need to stretch my back a little bit, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to play an ad. Let's play, what, what ad should we do? Let's go Let's go to the tote bag. I haven't seen the tote bag for a while. So the stained glass tote is um, a bag that I sell on my website. It's got tailored to fit artwork. There's actually two panels of artwork, so it's really cool. It's made out of a reliable vegan leather strap. Uh, it's got a cotton sateen lining with a small zipper pocket and a little magnetic snap enclosure, so it's no snap closure, so you can actually lock your bag really tight. Um, it's actually great quality, like uh, someone that I knew bought one and they actually got it absolutely drenched and it seemed to actually still last, so I was super happy about that. Um, if you, yeah, there's actually heaps of products on my website, like you might even notice some pouches. So just like the tote bag, they're actually made in Canada, I believe, um, and yeah, each um, each bag has actually two artworks, so the pouches there's two variants, like a sort of masculine and a feminine one. Uh, they're made of uh, spun polyester and durable denim with on the interior, and they've got these really nice vegan leather straps. So you can find all of those on emloidartist.com, and as well as a lot of my educational sources as well. So if you liked this stream and you want to see more of me doing things in Procreate, you're absolutely welcome to, um, yeah, Check out my Skillshare as well. I might do a little promotion of that towards the end. But yeah, with my Skillshare, there's actually a QR code on my website. And if you use that, I get like a little $10 bonus from Skillshare. So you don't have to pay anything, really. Um, you only pay if you stay subscribed, essentially. And with that, that, that subscription will actually give you a month not only to witness my crazy... Um, Skillshare course, but you'll also get a month of everyone else's Skillshare as well. So yeah, if you want to learn some things, because they have really cool little um, streams on things like photography and like illustration. Um, I think they even do a bit of music production, film, animation, that kind of stuff. So if you're keen, um, yeah, hop on over to my website, website check, click the link that says Skillshare and you'll get access to a month of that platform for free. And yeah, if you do my stream, uh, don't be afraid to share your artwork on there as well. So that's, yeah, when you do that, it actually sort of boosts me up in their sort of, um, in their own sort of search engine kind of thing, which is pretty cool. So don't be afraid to check that out. Really neat. Let's polish up some of these lines, just a tad. Just like that. There we go. Oh God, I really need to stretch my my neck. It's reached that point of the stream. <laughs> um, okay, let's take a quick drink. Ah, lovely.
really cool. I'll probably add a bit more detail to these um, cylinders, but um, I might do that a different stream actually. Um, cool. I'm still kind of just trying to decide what type of color I want for this artwork as well. I'm not entirely, not entirely sure actually. Might embrace some of the weird color palettes I've actually done in some of the previous artworks I've done. But um, yeah, I'm kind of liking this actually. It's kind of cool. So this has been a stratum sketch and I will definitely continue this. So I think we're well on the way to making something really cool and really fun. Um, I might actually end the stream relatively, um, yeah, I usually go for two hours, but I'm starting to feel oh, a little bit tired actually, because I've had a long day today and I'm going to have a longer day tomorrow, I think. So there's a truth, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that um, Emeloid Artist needs to get some sleep. But um, I hope Anyone who joined in on this session, so thank you, Dr. O, and uh, thank you, 88Nemo. I think you, I saw you in the um, in the chat earlier on as well. Uh, thank you for joining, and um, I look forward to seeing you in future streams. So, yeah, basically, if you like what I do, remember to check me out on my website, emeloidartist.com. Uh, here you can actually find a huge range of things that I do. So I was talking earlier about my Skillshare, so you can actually click this link here. And when you click the um, QR, no, when you click this link, yeah, you get that one month subscription. So don't be afraid to check that out. Um, you can also check out those products. But um, yeah, one thing I really want to stress is that if there's something you really missed today and you wanted to see it um, come on up, uh, don't be afraid to actually uh, check out the YouTube channel. So by going to live here, uh, this is kind of cool. Um, you can actually go to see previous streams on YouTube and when you click that you see my entire playlist. I'll also just quickly mention that on my disc talk on my Discord channel, I feel like a lot of the viewers who watch me are actually artists themselves. So if you want to share your art, you're absolutely welcome to. And if you leave a little message giving me permission to do so, I'll certainly do it. And um, yeah, basically um, I'll share it on my stream and I'll give you my critique. It'll be usually good. <laughs> And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing any artwork that you might like to share. Um, but yeah, I'll show you my YouTube channel as well. So that's, um, would you believe, Emloid Artist. Um, I, I like to keep my branding pretty straightforward and simple. Soon you'll actually see this particular stream up there as well. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cool content there. You'll see all my Doodle Blob streams, which are kind of cool. You notice I put a lot of effort into my thumbnails. That's something I'm really proud of. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's certainly a thing. Um, I'm going to end it early tonight um, just because so I can get some sleep uh, for tomorrow. It's, it's going to be a very big day. But um, I'd like to thank you all for joining. Uh, tune in the next stream will probably be on Saturday. I really should change the schedule for Twitch so that you can actually um, stay tuned. But um, yeah, essentially there I'll be continuing my doodle blob sketch. I'm not sure which one I'll do. I, maybe I'll do this blob. Maybe I'll do this one. Who knows, but I think it's going to have to be probably a more purpley color, I think, to contrast this green and these sort of pinks. So I'm looking forward to um, starting that. But yeah, if you like my channel, if you stumble across it on YouTube or if you stumble across my little streams on Twitch, um, yeah, feel free to follow. And if you really like the stream, consider sharing it with your friends. So you can actually share on any platform you prefer and every follower that I gain from that is super appreciated and I can't wait to see you in future. Um, but for now, that's me. Hang by if you still want to keep, if you still got that sort of art fix and you really need to get that art fix, if you still want to see some really amazing art created by someone, I'll actually raid someone at the end of every stream. Uh, this stream is no different, um, so I'm going to quickly find someone now to raid. So. Uh, that's me for tonight. Adios, my friends. Uh, remember, you can follow me on pretty much a lot of platforms. Uh, Instagram, TikTok. <laughs> I don't care about my TikTok that much. But you can follow me there if you want. And you can follow me even on Patreon. Uh, wherever you follow me, Emloid Artist. That's basically it. So just search Emloid Artist and you'll be able to find me. And if you miss any of those, check out my website, emloidartist.com, and you can find it there as well. But thank you so much, everyone, for joining, and thank you for watching this weird uh, stream. And I look forward to doing these stratum things in future. Um, 
See you soon, my friends, and hang on by if you want to see some more art, because I'll quickly I'll quickly raid an individual, and hopefully they appreciate my. How many viewers have I got? One. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully they appreciate that. But um, adios, my friends, and I look forward to seeing you in the next stream. Ciao.